So exactly in this case, um, what we did is you know, we don't have a rule, power rule for this. Um, no, we don't really know what the figure that we could look at. So let's go ahead and kind of understand what exactly uh, this looks like. And we can see that I can simplify this. I can rewrite this as negative x squared plus 9 all over x minus 3. And that can be simplified to, uh, let's see, factor out a negative. So that'd be an x minus 3 times x plus 3 all over x minus 3. Now let me actually turn my thing around so I can see myself. Make sure I'm not off of camera. And then obviously, you guys, that divides out, and we're left with a negative x minus 3. Now again, so therefore, I could rewrite this integral as 6 to negative 5 for negative x minus 3 dx, where remember, x cannot equal 3, because that is one of my initial con original conditions. If you guys just think about that, it's like an original condition. That's because that is a what? Whole, right? Now, we could integrate this, right? We could integrate this, or we could also just kind of look at the g. Um, uh, yeah, actually, let's just go and integrate. We could, well, we could integrate this, or we could also look at the area under the curve and kind of figure out what that is doing. That's the same exact idea. So let's just kind of see, you know, this is a line. It's nothing really kind of basic. But actually, let's just go ahead and um, um, if I'm going to integrate this, probably would be easier, maybe a little bit different. Um, let's kind of see what this graph looks like. So we're at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, up 1, and it's going like up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So the graph kind of looks like that. Boom from there. And we're trying to evaluate from negative 5 to negative 3. So we could easily go ahead and figure out what the area is under the curve um, for each one of those. Or again, we could also just rewrite this integral. We could keep it like that and try to find the areas. But do you guys kind of see from like negative 6 to like 5? That's really not going to be like the easiest case to do here, right? So we could probably just go ahead and integrate. Now again, what is, is this affecting our value here? Is this going to affect that? Because this is going to give a hole on the graph. But do we really care? Does the hole really matter as far as our area under the curve? No. no. So this, I mean, it's a condition, right? But it's not really going to be affecting our integrand here. So I can rewrite this as negative, uh, negative 5 to 6 of x minus negative 5 to 6 of 3. Sorry, I'm throwing dx's. OK? Now we can just go ahead and integrate here. So I have negative 1 half x squared from 6 to negative 5 minus, um, this is going to be 3x from 6 to negative 5. And then just go ahead and apply and find this. This would be a negative 1 half times 6 squared minus a negative 1 half times 5 squared minus 3 times 6 minus, let's put that in brackets, 3 times negative 5. And let's do this kind of individually. 36 squared is 36 times 1 half is going to be a negative 18. Uh, that's going to be 25. Um, and that double negative is positive, so that's going to be a 25 positive. 25 over 2 minus, then let's see, inside here we're going to have 18 plus, uh, plus 15, right? Eighteen plus 15 is going to be 43, so I'm going to have to uh, usually have a little bit more space here. But um, that's going to give me, uh, let's see, if we wanted to add those up, that would give me 43. And that'd be negative 43. So I'd be left with a negative 18 minus 43 plus 25 halves. Now again, guys, once we kind of did, if this is a free response, we could just leave it at it as is, right? But I'll just kind of have a little fun with, uh, with my fractions. Now I can subtract this to give me a negative 61 plus 25 halves. And 
that is going to give me, what, negative 97 over 2? Check my math for me correctly, but I think I got that all correct. Okay, so a rather simple problem, but kind of, you guys can see, can uh, 